So I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about what messing around in Audacity can do for your vocal quality because it's it's somehow more than you think, but also less than you think. So what I have here is a four track little audio I just recorded. I'm not fishing for compliments here. It's not good. I know what I'm talking about. It's not great. So I'm just gonna play it for you right now. We'll find So, as you can hear by the end of the lead line there, I was not too happy about the performance there. But it's not terrible. Uh, but there's a lot of things we can do here to make it a little better in a ways that you really wouldn't expect. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring everything into sync. You see how some things are just weirdly out of sync? I'm just going to take those and I'm going to move them so everything's lined up and so it sounds like I'm able to sing in track with a recording that doesn't change tempo. So I'm going to do that real quick. So for some reason, I just forgot while I was making this that this is actually a very long and arduous process. So what I've done here is I've sped up the footage of me working on that one step for up to 20 times speed and it still takes a few minutes. All I get done is I sync up the tracks. I do that by separating them out onto multiple tracks, cutting up each phrase, and then putting them right where they belong. Uh, I also go now and I cut out any extraneous mouth sounds manually just with the Generate Silence tool. And by the end of it, I have some really nice synced up tracks that are ready for the next part of the process, which is throwing them into Melodyne. So what we have here is if you're a good little singer and you, you don't, you play by the rules, you don't know what this is. This is Melodyne. And what it is, is a voice analysis and correction application. It can be used for a lot of audio things, but it's really good at voice. And that's what we're going to be using it for. So what you can see here is one of the recordings and the pitch is represented by this red line with these big red splotches representing the waveform pretty loosely. So let's hear it now. Not great intonation. What we can do is we can select everything grab this correct pitch button up here. It popped up a little window for me, but it's not showing up for y'all. And we're just gonna fix the center of those pitches, make them more on pitch. And you can see some of them drift very little. That means I did good. And then some drift a lot, like that note near the end there. Uh, it's not gonna sound good as I have just done it because what happens when you move around notes is that stuff starts to sound unnatural. So I'm gonna really hone that home by changing the pitch drift. And as you can see, all the squiggly lines go away, which makes it look nicer. So I go on for a few minutes here about how Melodyne usually makes things sound terrible if you put all the sliders to 100%. And then for some reason, this, this time it was a rare exception where it sounded fine. So I put all the sliders to 100%. Generally, as a rule of thumb, you want to keep your pitch center fix 75% or less, pitch drift fix 50% or less. And then you actually want to go through and manually move everything around. Because this was a short recording and it's all a solo voice, it worked out fine. It's gonna be a lot more difficult if you have a lot more sounds other than a solo voice. 
So with a tiny bit of manual fiddling just to move some notes that Melodyne disagreed with me on, I went through and I just pushed all of the voice lines through Melodyne and what resulted was a bunch of audio samples that were suddenly out of sync. It turns out they just offset the start of them for some reason, so that wasn't too hard of a fix. Uh, but what it does mean is that we'd lose some of the uh, <laughs> syncing that I spent so much time working on earlier, and I just sort of do a half job in syncing them right back up. So the last few parts here, uh, I recorded myself doing, but they take several minutes, and I thought it's better to have no visual than to have y'all sit there for 15 minutes listening to me explain in real time. So what I do here is with the low pass filter, high pass filter, and graphic EQ, I emphasize and de-emphasize different parts of the audio spectrum that I want and don't want in this recording. So since this recording is just of my voice, I can get rid of, say, some background hum by completely cutting any of the pitches that are below the notes that I'm singing. Higher up, it, it, there are a, a lot of really tiny little tricks I do. I like to roll off after 12,000 hertz, which is where like your S sounds and your T sounds are, to just sort of give it a, a softer, more mellow sound. It's not a usual thing, but most people do cut it off somewhere around 15,000 hertz. Uh, I went through and I actually did some basic math to find out where some of the prominent overtones would be in a flat major. And I went ahead and I emphasized those frequencies to make some of the overtones br uh, brighter and make it sound like I'm even more in tune. The last thing I did was, because I, I was really satisfied with how it was at that point, uh, there are a lot of tiny little fiddling things you can do to fix it, but I elected against it. I panned out the sound, so I put the tenor pretty much entirely in the left channel, then the lead a little bit in the left channel, a little bit in the right. Baritone is, and bass are mirrored of that, and I, I like to spread it out like that so it sounds like there's a quartet in front of you. A lot of old-fashioned barbershop guys really don't like it because it, it definitely sounds artificial, but at, in this day and age, we're okay with artificial sounding audio. Uh, but I spread those out and then I actually mix them before I edit anything else because the next thing I add is a reverb to make this very flat, boring recording of me recording directly into a microphone sound like it's in a room with you. So I like a very small but very reverberant room. So there's these loud reverbs, but they dissipate very quickly. And since we did that after we mixed everything, the reverb can be stereo too. So all of the channels will mix across each other to make it really sound like it's a room. And after that, I don't even do any other changes. Now that I've explained pretty much all the steps, I'm just gonna play you back to back the original and then our new final goosed up version. I, I really invite you to listen closely to what you do and don't like about the goosed up version because there are a lot of things it loses but there's a lot of things it gains and hopefully you agree that in the end it turns it from meh to okay we'll That's uh...